2012, Dr. Jordan Ewan completed a PhD in biomedical engineering at the University of Technology, Sydney, which saw him develop a smart wheelchair controlled purely by the mind for people with high level of physical disability. His work has been featured in a wide range of media, most notably ABC's Catalyst and Channel 10's The Project. A professional speaker to audiences ranging from school, primary schools, high schools, universities and corporates, he frequently presents across the country, including his own TEDx talk. Would you please join me in welcoming Dr. Jordan Newen to the stage. His topic is biomedical engineering and the role of the cyborg, futuristic assisted technology. I'll start with a little bit about my background. Thank you for having me here, by the way. This is just awesome. Um, so a little bit about my background. My dad designed robots when I was young, so I didn't just go into all of this stuff with no sort of premise. Uh, I used to play uh, chess against a robot my dad designed when I was really, really young. First, it stole all my toys. It took my Duplo blocks, and it would learn to pick them up and move them around, and that was all, all good. But what was cool about this robot is that it had inbuilt artificial intelligence. So it would learn to pick up a block and move it around, but there was a lot of things it had to figure out, and it would learn to do that better and better and better, and then it started getting onto games. And so that's when I started playing it in chess. Now, I was about five, six years old. I'm playing chess against this robot that every time it stole a piece of mine, it would pick up my piece and take it to the edge and then just dump it. And then it would carefully place its piece in, in the, uh, the same location. It actually had a bit of a personality, and the fact that it was learning for itself was really, really interesting. So uh, fast forwarding uh, a couple of years, um, I get to university and I take on electrical engineering because I want to design robots. No other reason other than I remembered this one that had a personality, I wanted to design robots. I was failing quite hard at uh, electrical engineering, I was not doing very well at all. And then in my second, uh, end of second year, beginning third year, somewhere around there, I, um, I went to a backyard pool party and uh, in this party we had a pool and we had a diving board, which is kind of rare in a backyard, but this diving board was not very good. Uh, we're all diving off at all afternoon being kids, I was about 20 at the time. Uh, and started getting creative with the dives. One of my dives went horribly wrong. I ran and jumped off it, it moved back, it came loose, moved back, and I went into the pool not knowing which direction I was going in uh, until my head hit the bottom of the pool and snapped to the side. And the crunch and the sound that I felt and heard in my neck uh, was just deafening. So I got rushed to hospital, uh, found out that I didn't break my neck, which was lucky, because I had to hold it with my hands at the time. Every time I let it go, it would sort of, so I had to hold it with my hands. Um, and I found out that everything was okay. I just tore some of the muscles in my neck. But by the time I got home, I got put in bed and I just could not move. I had the shock of pain, could not move for an entire day. And that one day changed everything. That one day changed my life. So people, I've, I've heard a few times that, you know, I seem to be an overachiever in academic. I'm not, I, I just like what I do. Um, so what happened was my life was just changed. I started thinking about what would life be like if this was a permanent thing? I had no idea what was out there. I started looking it up. I couldn't get it out of my head. And, uh, and the next day, I was able to walk, so I found out it was all good. But I started looking it up and started just finding out what technologies are out there um, for mobility if I'd made this a permanent thing. What I found was that technologies were completely limited, uh, and the technologies that were being made were all trying to take into account how not inclusive our society is. Um, the infrastructure just wasn't there, so people were trying to create technologies and assistive technologies to take into account the things that we don't have. We didn't have ramps in a lot of locations. We had, uh, we had stairs, and that's not very good for, for wheelchairs. So I started looking into how my line of work might be able to help out, and, uh, and I moved into biomedical engineering from electrical and, uh, and started figuring out how we are an electrical system. We operate on electricity, and I found out that the, uh, the brain controls all of this magic that makes us move through electricity. I can pick up on that electricity, I amplify it just like an electric guitar, uh, filter out the signals, and I can transmit it. So what I designed was um, a wheelchair that could be controlled by the mind, because I found out that for very high level physical disabilities, there were no options to control a wheelchair by yourself, to sometimes communicate for yourself, to control the things in your home by yourself, let alone anything else out in society. Uh, and so moving on from that, I did my PhD on that a few years on. Uh, I'm now doing a TV documentary uh, for a friend of mine. So this friend, he's 13 years old, beautiful kid. Um, he's got high level cerebral palsy and he can only move his eyes, 
but he has so much life and so much energy and he wants to drive a car, he wants to control the things in his home and again, these things aren't available. So I'm designing a technology for him on TV and showing others how to do it too where we are designing a headband so he's going to be able to control the lights, control the TV uh, and then I'm going to get him to drive a car next Tuesday hopefully. <laughs> it's not working yet. <laughs> That's called becoming superhuman. Keep an eye out for it. But the big thing is here is that I've been realising through all the stories I've been hearing that there's just not enough that we're doing in society and we can always do more. We can always be more inclusive and we can work together towards it. And there is no greater thing that I've found than when you're able to positively influence someone else's life. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks to all the work that you do at Young Care. I very much appreciate it. See you.